You're listening to the Inevitable Radio Show. I'm Bill Sumner. What we're talking about today, the first segment of the show, we're going to talk about time traveling as a tool. Because in your mind, in the psychology that you're using to create your reality, every one of us have a great propensity to time travel. What does that mean? Well, when you time travel, you get in that little brain of yours, you get into your mind, and you will go forward or go backwards on your timeline. So a moment is happening to you right now. And the moment that's happening to you, you either associate to the half full or you associate to the half empty, which means you are experiencing life as really good or really challenging right now. The fact of the matter is, in the half full, half empty glass metaphor, because I always ask my clients, for you, what is the glass? Is it half full or half empty? The truth is, the glass is always, always both. So what you experience of this moment is, are you connected to what is positive and what is going well? Do you see what is taking place in your life right now? And do you see it positively? Do you see it negatively? Do you see it as having benefit to you? Or do you see it as a challenge to you? Do you see it as flow and abundance and greatness? Or do you see it as struggle and challenge and life is ripping everything from me? And many people look at a struggle and they will time travel to the conclusion of that struggle and they will define the moment as meaning something to them. So let's bring that home. You're struggling with the economy. You're struggling with your bank account. You can time travel to the future and see that you have no money left, see that you've lost everything, feel all the pain of that, feel in your body the knot in your stomach. I like to call it the fist of doom in your stomach. But here's a really interesting challenge for you. I really want you to think about this. And all the times, if you're one of those people that watch crappy movies over and over again, and you see the terrible ending, you see yourself failing, you feel it, you know it, your time traveled to this future place, I got a question for you. Does those terrible endings ever happen? Where are you time traveling in your life? Where do you go on your timeline? Why do you go there? What do you create when you're there? These are all potentials. These are all programs. And many of us create pain and pain avoidance and challenge and struggle for ourselves. And many of us create greatness and ecstasy for ourselves. These are programs. This show is about psychology, mental mind tools. It's about practical change. It's about real change. It's about transformative, dramatic change to create a life that is off the charts. It is not as far away as you think. It is a strategy. It is a creation. It is not that you are destined to be in pain, more pain, less pain, in pain avoidance. In struggle, in struggle avoidance, how you program yourself to deal with life at its most fundamental level, what you're teaching your children when you are leading your company, your business unit, when you are a manager or supervisor at work, you are busy programming and permitting this reality to either be a time travel to the future where it's a disaster, a time travel to a world where everything is going to go wrong, and you can just right now, in this breath, in this moment, you feel it, you can see it, you can taste it, you can just absolutely have that fist of doom in your stomach that says, oh man, not me, not now, not ever. I'm not a winner. I'm not a champion. On my best day, I'm average. On my bestest day, I'm above average. Many of you actually, on your best day, you know, believe, think, focus on that you're below average. 
because you've had below average results or you have a below average life right now. But you need to understand these are all programs. If we were to go into your experience, pick your hero, pick someone you admire the most and suddenly parachuted them into your life and let them deal with your challenges. Let them create New Year's resolutions. Let them focus on today. What do I need to think? What do I need to breathe? What do I need to do today? What do you think they would create in your life with your marriage, your job, your leadership position, your challenges? Do you think they'd struggle and have the same results and outcome? Or you'd go, oh, no, of course, if my hero dropped into my life, they'd create incredible success. They're a hero. But here's the interesting thing. Who they are and what they do are two completely different things when you think about it. Now, the fact of the matter is many people line them up. So they look at the fact that, hey, in high school, I was average. In college, I was a partier. And then I got serious, and then I was average. And then I went into my first job. I was average. I went into my second job. I was average. I married a woman, a man I'm in love with. But yeah, our marriage is average. Hey, we're still together. Feel these programs running. But if you put their hero in their life, what you could discover, even if at the age of 42 or 32 or 52, that You've had 50 years of, 30 years of averageness. Your hero would parachute into your life and create greatness, would they not? Create winning strategies, winning moments. Is it because they're better, smarter, more gifted, more capable than you? Or is it because they think differently than you think? And if you wanted to hold on to their thoughts, hold on to their feelings, hold on to their beliefs, Could you do that? What would happen if you did? A lot of clients say, oh, that sounds really hard. Or I tried that for 15 minutes and yeah, then, then my thoughts overwhelmed me and I, I just had to go back to being me. And I asked the question, okay, so you can't do this. No, I could try, but nah, no, can't, can't, cannot. I cannot. Well, if I assembled everybody that you love on a desert island and said, for the next 30 days, if you do not think, feel, act, believe, focus on the way your hero would, I'm going to either kill all 30 of them, 50 of them, or because we like to be half full on the show, I'm going to, I'm going to make them, I'm a billionaire. This is a big psychology experiment to me. I'm a billionaire. I'm going to get every one of them $10 million if you succeed. Would you start crying going, <laughs> sorry, everybody, you're dead? Or sorry, everybody, you don't get $10 because I can't do that? Or would you figure it out? And in that space, if you really go there, you know that, well, if I had to, to save their lives, I guess I could. I guess I would. That is how these programs work. When you know why you must be more than average today, why you must be a winner today. Why you must have the psychology of greatness today. And even if you don't know what that is, if this is even your first time listening to the inevitable radio show, you're listening to this and going, oh, yeah, easy for him to say. But if he had my problem or challenge, he wouldn't say that. All the studies, all the research on winners and champions and greatness. And there are many common themes One of them is what we're talking about today. How winners time travel to the future and see success. See the win. See them solving the problem. See the hero rescuing the damsel in distress. See the hero slaying the monster. Thank you for listening to the Inevitable Podcast. Please visit our website for more information on this extraordinary coaching system at www.theinevitableu.com. Then sign up for your two-week free trial of our membership to gain access to hundreds of hours of amazing content and tools just like this. Now back to Bill. Not many people do that. Most people time travel to the future 
and they see their loss. They see the pain. They see themselves not succeeding. And if they're really honest with themselves, it's never happened to them as bad as they've pictured. Never. Maybe once. Generally never. It's never happened that way. But yet they live today, and the fist of doom today that's lodged in their gut is telling them, ah, that's who I am today. And that's what they experience. And as a consequence, they never win. They're never champions. They never stand on the podium. That is their life. And they don't teach their children how to be champions. And the only way you can teach your child how to be a champion is you have to act and be one. You have to find in your life what it means for you to be a champion. And you can find it. Welcome, Jeff. Welcome to the program. How you doing, Bill? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. How can I help you? The thing that that uh, I'm struggling with, Bill, is I'm the very best at what I do. And with our health care situation, one of the problems that I have is I, I find it uh, terribly frustrating because it's hard for me to get paid for what I do. And I can't figure out how to how to change that and turn my skills into money but what it does to me bill it sends me on a roller coaster ride so on some days when i go to the uh to the uh mailbox and there's money i'm happy but then on other days when there's no money i'm extremely sad and it affects every part of my life and i'm I'm trying so hard to figure out how not to let that bother me when you say money makes you happy and no money makes you sad, it's kind of a summary of the program. Would that be correct? Correct. Have you ever had a time when you had money and you weren't happy? Yes. So you know what that feels like. I do. You know what creates that. So there is, again, in this curious world that we occupy where we create a program and then we time travel and we hold on to it and we say, anytime I go to the mailbox, money equals happy. We already know, but wait, Jeff, there's times you have money and you're not happy. Hmm. There's a difference. Are there any times when you have no money and you're incredibly happy? There are. Yeah. Maybe it's when you're holding your wife. Maybe when it's you're looking in your children's eyes. Maybe it's when you're studying a manual and you're really, really excited about a new technique. There's there's no money in those moments, and those are some of your happiest times, right? That's correct. But think about this. When you started your paragraph, you said, Bill, when I go to the mailbox and there's no money, I'm sad, and it, it permeates everything in my life. So in that moment, your mind can go, well, wait a second, Jeff. There's times when we've had no money, and we're incredibly happy, and we're incredibly fulfilled. Because the movie you put in the DVD player, you can put a movie in that says, okay, um, I, I, I assisted in the surgery today. I, I talked to this family. They looked at me, and they said, oh, I'm so grateful you're on this planet. You did... You saved my husband's life, my wife's life. You saved something. You did something. You healed something. You're an incredible healer. You're an incredibly skillful man. And in those moments, probably have some of the greatest happiness. But you got to put that movie in the player. If the movie you put in the player now was, oh, man, if I go to my mailbox today, and there's no money, then I'm just going to be sad the rest of my day, and you go to the mailbox and there's no money, it's game, set, match, over, done. You have the ability to go, does money make me happy today? Yay. Does money make me sad today? I don't care. If I have money, great. If I don't have money, great. My happiness program and my sadness program, I'm going to stop connecting them to the mailbox and I'm not. I'm going to start connecting into something that really is real for me. It is the love of my family. It is the love of my work. It is the healing that I'm doing. And when you play that 
DVD, that movie, over and over again. So you go to the mailbox, there's no money. The old program, because you play it a lot, it's like the brain isn't name that song in three notes. It's in three nanoseconds. It plays 35 times a 200-piece orchestra of that song. So you go to the mailbox, there's no money, you start running the sad program, and you go, oh, oh, stop. (coughs) You scratch the record. (coughs) Stop. I'm going to be in surgery this afternoon. I'm going, to, I'm going to have a special date with my wife tonight. I'm going to go see my kids play today or see my kid do something today. That's the movie I'm going to choose to watch. That's my time traveling experience right now. I'm going to time travel to where my patient is healed, where their family is grateful. And when you do that, Jeff, what do you think your days will be like? I think when I do that, my day will change tremendously because my focus won't be on the mailbox. And then in this different space, new thoughts, new feelings, new ideas, I think you're going to discover that abundance and money and and getting paid for your value doesn't lie in how the planet is treating you. It lies in how you have been treating yourself. Okay. And when you connect at a higher level to why you're really here, and by the way, at the very same time, ask for money for it, ask for prosperity, ask for abundance and say, I want an idea today. I might invent a new surgical tool. I might uh, invent a new procedure. I might see something happening, and I'm going to write an article that's going to be published, and I'll get paid for it. I might be able to do some. You've had those thoughts and ideas many times, have you not? Very many. Have you ever written them down and told somebody, pay me for this? Actually, I just did. Well, yahoo! What (laughs) happened? Uh, The book is out. But I haven't um, spent a lot of time promoting the book. Why? Why? I I really don't know. I just I haven't spent a lot of time doing it. And you're absolutely correct. I should be doing that because there is a gift that I have that I could focus on other than the mailbox. Oh, dude! So you spend a lot of psychological processing time focused on the mailbox. You're one of the few that actually wrote a book. And and on a scale of 1 to 10, be real, be truthful, how awesome is the book? 12. (laughs) But I'm not going to spend time promoting it. Right. That makes sense. None. (laughs) But... You know, Jeff, thank you so much for being honest. This is the way most people, instead of running the Psychology of Greatness program, instead of running I Am a Winner program, they run the How Do I Avoid Disappointment program. How do I not go out into the planet, tell everybody my book's a 12, and then have nobody buy the book? I can't stand the thought of that. I can't stomach the thought of that. So somehow I'm going to just focus on the mailbox. Somehow that feels better to me today. Right. That that has more meaning to me today. You have a book done that's a 12 with the same effort and energy and intensity that you run the mailbox program. Go run Jeff, the successful author program, Jeff, the guy in, and whether it's a bestseller or not, it might be more appropriate to the field. You might only sell 500 copies of it, but one of those copies may go to an incredibly dynamic, unbelievable opportunity that's just waiting for you, that's going to pay you your value, that's going to increase your worth. That opportunity is awaiting you. You just have to walk into the room and throw that light switch on, but you're standing outside the door looking at the mailbox. I understand. Why wouldn't you go in that room and throw that light on and turn on music that, you know, we are the champion. You just won the Nobel Prize of your life that you came here to do. The incredible healer that you are is here now done. And the book is every day moving into more and more right hands and more and more right people will see it. And you're out promoting it and you're talking it and you're feeling great. When you're doing that, Jeff, where do you have time to run a mailbox program? You don't. You don't. And it gets exciting. It feels great. If you take anything from this show, time travel, 
to the movie ending that you want it to be, not what you're trying to not want it to be or not avoid it to be. Time travel to you win. The planet's better because you are here. And I promise you, you'll get that movie ending. We always get our movie endings. The movie endings that we play the most and feel the most are the ones that are always happening to us. Make your movie today incredible. Thank you for listening to the Inevitable Podcast. Please visit our website for more information on this extraordinary coaching system at www.theinevitableu.com. Then sign up for your two-week free trial of our membership to gain access to hundreds of hours of amazing content and tools just like this.